The Lord's showing me the time. I saw 15 minutes on the clock ticking. But the Lord said, no, those are seconds. He says, there's an acceleration going on. He says, the protection of Israel and your salvation are tied. He says, those things were prophesied from the beginning will come to pass. He says, the lies of religion, the lies of man, the lying spirits are attacking us from every angle. But he says, your truth, your heart, your salvation will guide you. The Lord says, the truth is my word in your heart. And the salvation is to know the Messiah. Father, take care of us in this time. Protect us, shield us in every area of our life. In Yeshua's name, amen. amen. Praise God. Wow, Richard. <laughs> We're pretty drunk in the spirit right now. Praise God. Yeah, it's Shabbat. Praise God. We have um, some new folks here. Welcome to Yeshua House. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a shifting going on. A lot of people don't realize what's happening in the spirit. And, you know, the teaching the Lord's been giving us is specifically for you. And we're going to get into it a little bit more. And I'm going to go back on the internet, because the Lord told me to go ahead and name this series. I got this series. This is actually a series. I don't know if you guys noticed I've been teaching a series. And because it's, it's part of your, the end time battle. The equipping of the saints, the myth of the equipping of the saints is not happening. And so, you know, the, the Lord really has been speaking to me about some of my, my roots and the people that have been around us and how we're supposed to take dominion. And every time we get in the, you know, the, the, how many people saw the throne come down? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. The, the, the training you're getting here is a corporate training that comes out of an apostolic mantle. All right? And, and so I had to sit where you've sat to receive. And there's a point where you start holding the poles and you're part of the, the, the team. And so uh, what, what I said earlier about the church is closing, people are leaving church because they've lost their hope. They're not seeing the stuff that they're supposed to see in church happen. So they're kind of, they're just literally just, well, I'll just, I'll just go hide under a rock and die. And we've got to get you that Hebrew mindset where you're going to battle with tenacity and understand that God's on your side and you're going to do it regardless. That's where, that's where I'm not going to back down. And, you know, this week uh, there's been a lot of battles. And uh, there's, it's always about defining the spirit. And, you know, uh, there's, uh, there's the biggest spirit is this division in the, in the body of Christ where people... They believe they have something, and then they, they, they don't want to submit. And the leadership has to submit. And I was, I was praying this morning, and uh, I got a phone call from the gentleman that I was praying to God. I go, hey, I need to hear from him. And so I have people in the prophetic that I listen to, too. Okay? And every once in a while, they'll, they'll pop up. They, literally, I'll just pray, and they pop up on the radar. Praise God. And so the, the understanding of the apostolic is not just a church word. Uh, you can go to churches and they call themselves apostles and they really haven't done anything. It's a title that they put on themselves to control you guys. And it should be the opposite that, you know, if you have a title, you should be functioning in that ministry. So uh, this, this whole... Teaching that we're giving you is for anti ministry, and this week we're gonna we're gonna slightly touch on this. Um, we're in uh, Numbers chapter thirty four eighteen, and we're getting close to the. You know, we got Deuteronomy, and then after Deuteronomy, we we start the 
the, the five books of Moses over again. It's, the Pentateuch is the uh, teaching here that, that we, we try to touch on. And what we've been trying to emphasize is what you see in the Old Testament, God, you see the types and shadows in the Old Testament is also in the New Testament. And, and so what we were seeing last week, we were talking about how uh, the Lord puts things in our mouths and why we must speak. That was in Numbers uh, 23, 12. And this week in Numbers 34, 18, we, we come across, and you shall take one leader of every tribe to, uh, to portion the land for his inheritance. And first of all, we were in worship, and this wasn't in my teaching, but the Lord was showing me specifically how that land, Israel, was divided up among the tribes. Number one. There's documentation right here that's 3,400 years old, and it's right there. Okay, so this, is, this has been there for a long time. And even in the Quran, it states that Israel is for Israel. So these lying spirits, this politically correct stuff that's going on in the church system where people want to support, oh, we're the humanitarian aid, we need to understand, we need to support God. If the Bible says that's kingdom, why, why, is, the, why is Israel so important anyway, a lot of people ask. Well, first of all, it's where you're going to end up. That's where the New Jerusalem comes down. That's God's promised land. It's the last piece of Eden, and this is where we're battling for. That's why the devil's going crazy over that land. It's a foothold. But, as I was praying, I, I, somebody showed me that article that was in Jerusalem. The Muslims, were comp the Palestinians were complaining when they shoot the rockets that their God moves them. Did anybody see that article? I mean, that was on Facebook. That was, that's, it's, it's like, and their God. Well, they're recognizing what? The God. The God. Not their God. The God. And so whatever they're following, that spirit they're following is deceptive. And we spoke about this a while back ago, that this original sin of Adam is confusing to the enemy too. Because he makes plans, but he cannot establish them. But based on the covenant God has given us through Christ, that we also can battle back, and that he gives us some protection that they, can't, they cannot see or understand. So this week... We're, it says that one chieftain, one from every tribe, you shall take the, take the land, the possession of the land. In, in the New American Center, it says, it says a portion the land for inheritance. How many people have the word her, inheritance in there? Yeah. All right. Well, let me explain inheritance. It's just not a one-time, two-one-person thing in Hebrew. This is an everlasting inheritance. You're not supposed to get wealthy and give all your kids, give all your money to the kids, and that's supposed to be the end of that money. It says a good man gives a blessing to his second and third and fourth generation. It needs to be handed down, but there also has to be a spiritual blessing there. But if the spiritual blessing isn't there, you're not going to receive the financial blessing long term. Think about these people, that all these wealthy people that started off God-fearing folks, all these Ivy League schools that started off as Christian colleges have switched to the dark side. Seriously. So we're not here to judge that. Oh, you're not supposed to judge. Yes, we are. We got, we got to know what time it is, first of all. This possession of the land I was praying about, and the Lord was showing me it's the apostolic covering. That those people of each of those tribes are supposed to take an area and pray over it. That's their responsibility in prayer. And why is Israel, these folks aren't saved? Are they saved, David? Some of them are, some of them aren't. The question is, why are they still protected? They have a covenant. They have a covenant to the land. Plus, they are speaking the word of God as they pray. 
They are praying, Psalms 91 over themselves, they are praying many different psalms of protection over themselves. They are speaking God's word out, and it's not returning void. It's protecting them. So we're going to understand that the, we have to cover the land, but accept it as inheritance. And we've lost that in our country. We've lost that spiritual inheritance over our land. Oh, we're not a Christian country. That's a lie. Over 80% of the people say we're a Christian country. We're a Christian country. It was founded on Christianity. It was freedom of religion. It was actually freedom of Christianity. Because the king was trying to impose a form of Catholicism and self-rule. And this is how we ended up with the Sunday church system in the United States. The original church system, a lot of people don't realize, was based on the Sabbath and the holidays. So we, we got tricked and fooled along the way, and we've, we've talked about that history over and over, but we have to understand that, that inheritance gives us the authority, <clears throat> responsibility to rule the kingdom, the land. What we're given is a part of the kingdom. It's not your property, it's not my property. It's God's property. It has nothing to do with anything other than you have a responsibility to oversee, apostolically, go out there and claim that piece of land every week where you work, live, and breathe. Every time you come home and you live in an apartment complex, you drive around at extra time and pray the power of God over it and those people get saved. Don't, don't, has anybody done that? Yeah, you got to do that. You drive around your parking lot. You just get all those demons out of there. You have authority to speak it out. Make sure you down, roll down your window and pull out your shofar. I'm in. <laughs> Let's go to Hebrews. And we're, we're back in Hebrews. And why is he... I, I like Hebrews. And I'm trying to give you illustrations of the Old Testament being fulfilled in the New Testament through the covenant of not only Christ, but the covenant of the, the Bible. There's a, the, the teaching of the Old Testament hasn't gone away. These basic concepts must stick and stay forever. Oh, that's all put away. We're just going to float around like this. You know what? That's not true. You have to understand the time we're in. And if you don't understand all the authority you have, how are you going to battle in the end time? I'm going to tell you something here in the next minute or two. This is going to kind of shake your shoes. Um, we're in Hebrews chapter 1, and we've been using this because Hebrews chapter 1 starts off with uh, verse 7, and the angel says, who makes his, makes his uh, angels wind and his ministers a flame of fire. And we've been seeing that in here lately, haven't we? All right. And I'm going to teach you something that you... Uh, uh, we're talking about seeing in the Spirit. We, we're, uh, we have a lot of prophetic people in here, and there's a covering here for this. I don't want you out there walking around looking for angels on fire and things happening like that. We're going to get into the teaching about that. But, the son, but of the Son, he says, Thy throne, of, o, o God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of his kingdom. Verse uh, 9 Thou hast have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Lawlessness means without the Bible. If you're preaching a gospel without the Bible, foundation of the Bible, you're, that's a law, lawless person. Therefore God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy companions. Listen to this. And verse 10, And thou, Lord, in the beginning this... this lay the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They will perish, but thou hast remainest, and they will become as an old garment, as a mantle thou shalt roll, up, roll them up. As a garment they sh will also be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years will not come to an end. All right. I'm a, we're going to backtrack. We're... We're in verse 11. It talks about change your garment. Okay? Change your garment. How many people have that in their Bible? 
If you have an NIV, it says change your garment, right? Verse 11. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11. We're in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11. There's different words there for changing the garment. Okay. Okay, and I'm telling you, you know, this is where we get different translations. What is the new garment? What is the new garment? Is there a new covenant? What is paid for now? Okay, and we're going to get into that. So, could the new covenant be the armor of God? Could the new garment be the armor of God? See, it's not a new covenant, it's a completed covenant. See, in the Old Testament, they did not have something that we have. And we're going to see that in verse 14, we'll get down there. Verse, let's go back to 13. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at that my right hand until I make thy enemies a footstool for thy feet? Are ye they not all ministering spirits? Okay, ministering there is ongoing. It's not going away. There ha it's happening right now with and without your approval. Okay? Actually, without your approval, when you say something stupid, you stop your angels. We talked about that. Sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. If you're born again, you have a different garment than you had in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, they were looking towards the Messiah. As Christ died on the cross, we receive salvation. There's an inheritance that comes with the salvation... And there was a changing of the garment because the old garment wasn't because of an old covenant. The covenant wasn't completed yet. We've talked about this before, about the fivefold ministry, the apostolic, and the, gov the, the garment. And I was praying about this, and it, I'll tell you what, the Lord gave this to me yesterday morning. Is that when you were, your arm was cramping up? <laughs> I'm sitting there praying for Kimberly, the Lord speaking to me. <clears throat> so we need to understand that verse 14, how many people have the word escape in verse 14? Nobody? Okay. Your salvation is a form of escaping from death. Does that make sense? You were sentenced to death based on the sins of Adam. You've accepted Christ. He paid the penalty for you. You've accepted him as master, and your spirit was reborn. You're born again, and you have salvation. Your salvation is the only thing that's going to get you through the end times. Well, I know this. It doesn't matter. I can do this. It doesn't matter. Your salvation has to last to the end of the game. One saved, always safe. I won't gamble on that. People, people get deceived all the time. Well, we got these ministering angels. Yeah, you do. But there's also the demonic side of this, and people fall in that trap. And we're going to get into that. But the salvation part has to be the priority of the end time church. Yes, Jesus is the Messiah, Yeshua, HaMashiach. We're not here to learn about more information. We want to center yourself back to your salvation. Remember in Revelation, he'll spit you out. You need to go back to your salvation. That constant tweaking and understanding who you are in Christ is what's going to keep you on track. So we escape through salvation. We escape death. We escape certain things that will happen. But 
we also have a destination point after we escape. We get to go to the point where we get to worship with the king forever and ever and ever. Oh, you're going to go to forever and ever land. No, it's not a Michael Jackson thing. <laughs> and we'll leave Michael out of this. Did anybody notice, how, how many people <clears throat> know that Janice, Janet Jackson's now a Muslim? Ooh, go look it up. She just ruined your day. Man, I'll tell you what, <laughs> Tina's is shaking his head. And she has her burqa. I don't, get, I, I don't think she has a weave anymore. <laughs> there goes all the Korean business. Did you know, we, we got the perfect congregation. We all sell hair to each other. Praise God. Right, well, let's, let's turn. <laughs> let, right, Johnny? All right, let's turn to Ephesians 5. Now, let's, let, we're going to break this down. We're going to analyze this because I want you to understand the fullness of your salvation. If you don't understand how your salvation works, first of all, there's an, an inheritance in, in Hebrews 1.14 Included in your inheritance is a ministry of angels. Is that clear to you now? There is a ministry of angels in the Old Testament, which is a little bit same but different in the New Testament. The difference in the New Testament is we have the Holy Spirit in us, and that's the one we listen to for self-direction inside. And we're going to break it down some more. I was trying to talk and walk at the same time. We turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, verse 10, Finally be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you, you, that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, against, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces, world forces, WCC, of this darkness against the spiritual forces, wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up your full armor of God that you'll be able to resist in the evil day, having done everything to stand firm. How many people in verse 13 have end day? Now, how many people have an amplified Bible? We need some more word people here to get those Amplified Bibles up. I, I love the Amplified Bible. When you start reading the Amplified Bible, it takes you places to break it down to chew it, chew it a little bit firmer and smaller. Some translations where it says evil day, that's end times. I believe this end time ministry has to do about putting on the armor of God. In the Old Testament... If you read through Isaiah 59 through 60, you'll see the same analogies of the king, the priest, and the, and the prophet. As we use the same analogy as the fivefold ministry, therefore take on their... Um, therefore, take on the full armor of God that you may resist. Verse 14, stand firm, therefore, having girdled, gird your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. We've talked about this as the Hebrew priest, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel, in addition to all things, taking up, taking up the shield of faith, which, 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 with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. Okay, the evil ones are demonic, Satan, shooting things at you. Verse 17, take, on, take the helmet of salvation. Helmet of salvation. This is, this is your key. If you lose your salvation, this is why the devil wants you to drink, do drugs, get in motorcycle accidents, crack your head open and can't think or remember anything. Once you, for, once you forget that you're saved, guess what? Take on the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Belt, teacher, breastplate of righteousness is pastor, shod in shoes, the evangelist, the shield, the, pro, the to distinguish, extinguish the fiery darts. That's the prophet, helmet of salvation, and the Hebrew priest, 
the salvation. We see that that's the apostolic. So we have a fivefold ministry tied to <clears throat> what the Lord showed me yesterday morning. It wasn't an angel that told me this. It was the Holy Spirit. I see things. I hear things. But a lot of times the Lord just inputs something into me. I know that's from the Holy Spirit. He showed me about verse 16, in addition to all things. Okay, so you already got your clothes on, right? You got your clothes on. He says, taking up the shield of faith, which you will, you will, you will, will, will be able to extinguish all flaming missiles of the evil one. Let me, let me clarify something. I have monovision. It's not mo from getting mono, okay? I, I, have mono, I can't read sometimes because one eye is distance longer than the other. Okay, so it's not that I can't read, I just can't see. Monovision is when you kiss people and you get it, right? So we're taking up the shield... How many people last week saw the blue shields? We had some folks over here and some folks over here. Remember the blue shield? The Lord was showing me that the salvation we had includes the protection of the angels. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. It's not something we are looking, oh, i got to get my angel over here. I'm going to pull them over here. We're not calling the angels to do certain things. We have Psalm 91. We're speaking the word of God because we see that in verse 17. Therefore, take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God directs the angels as we're praying. It's just like the Israeli uh, IDF soldiers are doing now. They're praying and, and there's cover. The nick in the armor is the sin issue. The shield for extinguishing and d distinguishing the fiery missiles are tied to the discernment of the Spirit that we have with the Holy Spirit, understanding that some of this stuff is demonic, and to fight the demonic, God sends the angels, because the Holy Spirit cannot do certain things in the Spirit. That's why he sends the angels to protect us. Now, we're not sitting here getting into preaching about worshiping angels. We've talked about that a dozen times. I'm trying to explain the mechanics, how things operate. So your salvation includes the word of God and the protection that God sends around you. There's a supernatural world there that's released as you speak the word of God. And it, the angels respond to that without your having to, you know, you know, pray or worship the angels. They work for you. They work with you. They work for God, actually. So verse 11, it's a new garment. Verse 12, warfare. Verse 13, the whole armor. Verse 16, the shield of faith Believing God and understanding he will shield you with angels. I'm not saying you have to walk around, put angels on your bumper, and, you know, touched by an angel. We're not getting into that garbage. We're not, we're not going there. The mechanics of the ministering spirit are a 24-hour phenomenon, if you let it. You stop it when you say, I don't believe. Now, once saved, always saved, get somebody in here. Well, I don't believe that anymore. Can you, can you actually forfeit your salvation? Can you get to the point where you're just so full of drugs, or you're, you're, you're tweaked and you're messed up? Yeah, I've seen it. I've dealt with people. They're, they're just so messed up with drugs. They're counting on the pharmacia instead of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of pharmacia. The deception of pharmacia. Okay, so the New Testament angels are a little bit different than the Old Testament angels. The Old Testament angels would come 
and speak and give certain directions. The Holy Spirit now is doing that full time with us. He's giving us the discernment of the Spirit. And so the angels, they're kind of like the wide receivers. They're going out and doing the long bomb. They're taking certain business. They're going out and circumstantially changing events, moving those missiles over, pushing things aside, lining things up, coming to the healing. Well, Jesus didn't use angels. Well, in the, in the Gospels, you also see that they were waiting for the angel to come to the pool and stir the water so they can sit there and get healed. That was, that was right up to the time of Christ. But then you see the angels coming to Mary, Joseph, Zacharias. You see the angels pop up in the book of Acts. Let's turn to Acts chapter uh, 5. Did everybody see how I'm trying to set up a case here where we have to understand we have authority in the Spirit and we have equipment, and angels are a part of that equipment. Praise God. Not like one of those big old four-by-fours. Acts chapter 5, 17 through 22. The high priest rose up alongside his associates. This is the sect of the Sadducees. They were filled with jealousy, and they laid hands on the apostles and put put them in public jail. But an angel of the Lord during the night opened the gates of the prison, taking them out. Now, the angels can give you direction. They don't, they don't teach you certain things. Angels cannot teach salvation. They can't preach the gospel. Angel, if the angels could preach the gospel, they would be doing it a long time ago because we're not good at it. The angels spoke, gave directions, said, Go your way, stand and speak to the people in the temple with the whole message of this life, salvation. This should be in there. But upon hearing this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest and his associates came, they called out the council together. They just got out of jail, and the angel said, Okay, guys, you got faith now? I just got you out of jail. Go preach. Go preach. That, did I just make that up? That's what he told them. If you're having supernatural things happen around you, you should get some boldness in your fortitude. Seriously. You need to understand that God protects you at this one level. He's going to take you to a higher level to fight. Did they see? They spoke to the angel. But they didn't see how he got them out. Lots oh, of angels. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. We're dealing with Cornelius now. Cornelius, is he a believer? No, he's not a believer right now. He's not a believer. What he was doing, he was praying psalms, and God was listening to him. Chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. Now there was a certain man at Censoria named Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian cohort, a devout man, one who feared God with all of his household and gave many alms to the people of Israel and prayed to God continuously. And, and in the ninth hour of the day, clearly saw a vision, let's put this, a vision, an angel of God who just came into him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius was fixing his eyes upon him and was being much alarmed. He said, what is it, Lord? Remember when you got an angel, you need to ask him what it is because they're usually messengers. And he said to him, your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. A lot of people discount their offerings. You see there was a little tie in there with the offering. But his prayers went up also. He wasn't born again. But he was seeking the truth.
And in verse 5, And now dispatch some of the men to uh, Joppa, and send a man named Simon, who is also called Peter. He is staying with a certain tanner named Simon, whose house is by the sea. So he basically, the angel spoke to him and said, Look, we know what you want. This is how you get it. And he sent Peter to him. Peter could preach the gospel. Something happened in the next encounter. Right, let's just throw this in here. <clears throat> and when the angel who was speaking to him had departed, he summoned two of his servants and a devout soldier of those who were in the constant attendance of him. These soldiers knew who Cornelius was and, and what he was doing. There's a chain of command there. Could this be possibly the same centurion that Jesus spoke to? So there's a chain of command and authority that people follow. The angel gave instructions, so what happened next? The door, there was a vision, Peter sees the, 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 the vision, well that's why we can eat pork. It has nothing to do with pork. If you read that whole chapter, it has to do with people getting saved. It says people. It doesn't say pork. Does it? No. Or shrimp. It's about people getting saved outside the Hebrew culture, but they believe in God. They receive salvation and the phenomenon of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That would push the Gentiles into what we call the New Covenant. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. Well, you know what? They didn't either. And then when it happened, the Jewish people or the Hebrew people accepted the non-Jewish people, the Gentiles, into the covenant. So that was powerful. So Cornelius had a vision. And so like when we're, we're in prayer and we, we have this corporate prayer going on, and the angels come in, we're going to start seeing visions. Certain things will slow down. Now, there's, there, I, I don't believe everything I see on YouTube. Seriously. There is one deal on YouTube where uh, it's, it's, it's photographed. Uh, you might have seen it. This, this kid was in a car, and there was an intersection, and this car ran a red light, and and it has a little time thing there, and the, the, the car was actually, there's like a flash of light, like you're thinking it's going to be the crash, and then it's somehow it's moved over. So what we're saying, the angels can circumstantially intervene. See what I'm saying? It's not like we're going to pray, oh, I'm praying that the angels clean my house. Make my bed, clean the dishes. You know, we don't want to abuse these guys. You, know, you get some union angels, you're going to have a real problem. They're, they're going to come against you. But there's, there's certain things that they, they're, they're going to do because they're required to protect you. Unless you said, I don't believe that, I don't need them. Faith moves them. Unfaith stops them. Ver, let's go to Acts. We're going to move along here real quick. Acts chapter 12. We see Peter in jail again. And so he has his get out of jail angel card. Verse 6. We see Peter uh, on, a ver on, that, on that very night when, when Harold was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, and a guard in front of the door was watching over the prison. All right. They had an experience with him once before, kind of just scooting out the door. Behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter's side, rose him, said, Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself and put on your sandals. And he did 
So, and he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow. And he did not know that this was being done by an angel was real, but he thought he was seeing a vision. How many people have in their Bible a dream? He thought it was a dream. Okay, in the Amplified it says dream. It was not like a vision dream. It was surreal. He was going through this thing as it was a dream. He was thinking, well, I'm just dreaming. I'm getting up. Okay, it sounds good. Okay, there's a guy there. there. My chain just fell off. I'm going through the door. Nobody's seeing us. We're walking right out the door, walking out front. Oh, yeah, that's what I've been praying for. Pretty surreal. That vision is a part of heaven coming down. I believe the glory of God came down. That's why when we pray and we see the glory, that that glory is being released because in that glory is his presence and, it is an, and attending him are angels. Oh, wow, we were really talking about angels a lot. <clears throat> but this has to do with what? <laughs> Salvation. Adam lost that supernatural realm that we should be operating in. We're getting little boosts from these angels. Every time you go home, you pray. We pray, hey, there's protection over you. You come back the next week, praise God. What happens when you have salvation and you start neglecting or negating the angels, where's your protection? Well, I'll just stand on God's word. That's great. God's word includes the angels. So you're saying God's word's not complete. Or you're special. One of the things in the spirit realm is there's a different levels of battles. Higher levels, bigger devils. And we're going to start seeing this in this end time acceleration. So the preparation of understanding how the spirit realm works starts boiling into an area of discernment we're going to get into. All right, so we go to Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Here's Paul, 1625. Now, I'm going to say something here about Paul. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. It doesn't say angel there, does it? Well, we have to see them to know they're there. No. <laughs> I tell you what, if he, he shakes the ground underneath there and your chains fall off, those are, that's God. God's doing something. That's, not, that's just not you know, a quinky dink. And so your faith doesn't have to see the angels. First of all, they don't want to see you all the time. <laughs> we do stupid stuff all day long. We say stupid stuff all day long. They're probably walking around like this. No, 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 no. They're probably, was that a word of God? We could really get to the point, we could really get to the point where we're not using the word of God, and they're just standing there bored going, say something from the scripture, please. Send me a bone, you know. He says, come on, give me something. So we, we don't have to see the angels. And we were talking about this prophetically. We're training people because some people see, some people hear, some people feel. They felt the earthquake. You're going to experience different phenomenon and we need to know when we pray and we speak certain things, if you're in a 9-11 situation, you're trapped someplace and you speak and that wall falls out, you thank God you know that there's somebody there on the other side of that wall tearing it down for you. Well, the fireman came and got me. Well, how did the fireman know that you're supposed to be right there? Were you led there by the Spirit? Certain things you do just out of trusting God. Well, I know, I know, I know in my spirit. If it's not from God, you'll know, know in your spirit it's evil. You'll get the eebie-jeebies. You can trust certain people beyond other people. 
So the angels help you escape. The angels will direct you. The angels are unseen and seen, and they're felt and they're heard. Acts chapter 27, 23. Here's Paul again. The angels tell Paul how to survive. I'm just going to use that for a quick example. I've I got to get to this next point. And for this very night, angel of God, who I belong, and I, I serve, stood before me. He said, do not be afraid. First thing you've got to be is not afraid. Amen. You're in trouble, don't be afraid. God's going to protect you. He explains how to survive during this time and what to do next. You've got to throw away everything overboard. I've got to get rid of the, my car. I've got to get rid of this. I've got to get rid of that. You may have to downsize. They downsized everything off the boat so they could survive. The balance to survive comes from the Word of God. Knowing the Word of God, speaking in the Word of God. So the Word of God says, how, how's an angel going to appear to you? Usually there's a light there. The angel shows up in a hippie outfit. Hey, I'm the angel from, you know, the 70s. You got a hippie angel, and he's not quoting scripture. You got a problem. <laughs> a little Jerry Garcia, you probably got something demonic going on. Angels are in character with God's word. The angel's character follows God's word, God's plan. They don't change. They can't change. Do not pray for visions or pray to see an angel. You don't do that. If you see one, great. If you don't see one, don't worry about it. People who always are seeing angels, always seeing demons, may have an unbalance. There's something that maybe not balanced there. So they have to, they have, there's a discernment there. And usually those kind of people think they're more spiritual than you are. They have a, something haughty about them. Ooh, I'm, I just, ooh, I see a demon over there. I see a demon over here. Go look in the mirror. <laughs> we need to study the Word of God and expect a supernatural blessing, supernatural experience, supernatural deliverance. If salvation is tied to this end time revival, the salvation is tied to the supernatural, and we keep going back to salvation because that's what you got, that's your first love, is your salvation, then these other things are expectation. When they happen, they happen. The rest of the time, you should be operating out of the fact that the grace that God has given you, your salvation, your life, you know, you know my definition for grace, right? If you're breathing, that's grace. Seriously. Well, it's not some, something ooey-gooey. No, you're alive right now. God has his hand on you. He wants to use you for this end-time ministry and take it up to the next step. We need, to, we need to study the Word of God and expect the deliverance from danger. We also need to understand these hyper-spiritual people may not be right. Well, this one lady always sees these things and blah, 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 and it's not scriptural. It's not found in scripture. Well, or they'll come up with something and say, well, I don't, I don't believe in this. I'll pick and choose this or I'll see something over there. Or they always, well, my angel has a name or something else has something going on, blah, blah, blah. They start putting labels on things that really don't pertain to God's word. That's when you get a problem. We have cults. <clears throat> where angels have came and spoken to a man. Islam, Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists. These are people that actually put angels up here on a pedestal. They, have, they put that what comes out of the angel's mouth above God's word. Well, how do you test that? How do you test that? Very simple. We're going to give you the answer. Let's go to 1 John we got to test these spirits, 1 John 4. 
one through three. And somebody mentioned the Pope earlier, and I am just amazed what's coming out of the uh, Pope Mobile. What do they call that place over? Oh, Rome. And over there, they are saying that Jesus is not coming back. And so we need to be good and contribute to the overall humanity of mankind. And they are not saying one thing about the 17,000 Christians that were killed in Syria since the beginning of this year. 17,000. They got the UN going into Hamas, who are shooting, how many missiles they've shot now? Is 3,500 missiles? Godzilla mounts. They got Christians all over Iraq being killed, tortured. All the places of Christianity being destroyed. Historical sites. And this is the thing I love. They have to rape the women, the Christian women, before they kill them so they don't make it to heaven as virgins. Holy smoke. If that's not demonic, what is? B verse... 1 John 4, Beloved, do not believe in every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. They have worshipped angels based on these appearances. They hear these angel words, they start prof preaching a new gospel, but you know the Spirit of God, we got the Holy Spirit, right? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. It's real quick. You ask these people about the Jehovah Witnesses. No, no, that was an angel. Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, that was an angel. They don't believe that Jesus was Jesus. So whatever spirit that motivated him from first, and every spirit does not confess, verse 3, does not confess Jesus is from God, and that this is the spirit of the Antichrist. Verse 3, it says, This is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that is coming and now is already in the world. That spirit of the Antichrist has been here since the beginning. It's a word-twisting, lying, demonic, straight-from-the-devil word. He uses different systems based on religion, but this Antichrist spirit is out there saying Jesus is not coming back. Well, if Jesus said he's coming back, that means Jesus must be a liar, right? And everything he wrote about him is a lie. And everything in the book of Revelation is a lie. And everything in the New Testament is a lie. And he's not coming back. Oh, by the way, if you're a Christian, you're under the authority of the Pope now, according to the Pope. Not this guy. So the Antichrist spirit, the Pope, has a counterpunch. The counterpunch is, we have the Holy Spirit. Verse 4 you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he is in you than he is in the world. You have salvation, they don't. Your inheritance is a salvation, and in that inheritance comes the authority to speak the word of God and expect the supernatural from God to succeed in every area of your life. This, verse 5 there are from the world, therefore they speak as from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, he knows God, listens to us, but he who is not from God does not listen to us, but this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of error is this demonic, antichrist spirit. When they say, Jesus is not coming back, they are in error. Well, we're not supposed to judge. You better judge that. They're lying and deceiving people right into hell, and we don't understand that, that we're operating in the Spirit 24-7, but we're not exercising that gift, and so we never see any breakthroughs. We don't know what the full armor of God is. 
We don't know what the spirit realm is and the different levels of the spirit realm. That's why we're teaching you this so you can take it up the next step in your personal life. Am I talking loud? <laughs> it just starts coming out, guys. So this salvation you have is a supernatural thing. God gave you life while you were dead. The discerning of the Spirit is your judging what's going on in the world. Not being sheep, because those people that don't have salvation are in the world and cannot understand what's coming out your mouth. They don't see the life in you. They can't. When they start judging you, that's also an antichrist spirit, because they see the life in you that they don't understand. They operate out of a spirit of fear 24-7. They're not conscious about what God's doing. So these ministering spirits are going on 24 hours a day. So your confident level has to be higher up here, and what's coming out of your mouth has to be consistent with the Word of God. This is how God is going to maneuver the whole end-time church to be what? Focus on the destination... Understand the harvest that's coming around and bringing the blessings to those people that take the inheritance of their salvation. Your inheritance of your salvation will bring much. The Holy Spirit that is in us will always be the deciding factor. The small voice, he speaks to us the Holy Spirit will speak to us at a level that we can comprehend what to do next. If you're not ready, and you don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, you're shortchanging yourself. Whatever your personal goal is at this time will be shortchanged. Because you're not allowing God to give you your full inheritance that you take and leverage here on this planet to get everything that you need to fulfill what God's plan and destiny is for you. Let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, 26. What the Holy Spirit starts doing, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, which whom the Father sends in my name, will teach you all things and bring you remembrance of all things I said to you. So the gospel is imparted into you through the Holy Spirit, and you can speak the gospel, the truth, the power, the love, the salvation to people that need it, and you're also rewarded. This is part of the apostolic. This goes back to the dominion you have to speak out into the world and to speak life into dying people. The problem is people don't trust God. Well, I trust God. Okay, great. Does he trust you? Are you taking care of God's business? What do you mean? Uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? I, I, I look at myself sometimes, and, and uh, you know, uh, if, if you know Kimberly and I, we are like ultimate warriors. You know, I mean, we need to have a, what is it, a, what's that cage fighting when they, they get, so, shouldn't be our home, but you know, we're, we're both very tenacious. But we also have to realize that the Christians, most Christians, are trying to please men, mankind. And they're missing the fact of what's going on in the church, and the churches are falling down like we talked about earlier. So the, the goal is to walk in the Spirit, live by the Word of God, and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, as He's teaching us, the angels, like we were saying earlier, He's teaching us how to avoid certain mistakes. We want the angels in overtime. The angels are circumstantial situations. We pray to send the ministering angels for healing. We can do that. We're allowed to. God will send them. God send the ministering angels. He, most of the time they're already there. We, we just have to have somebody trust him enough to release them. Put them to work. The Holy Spirit teaches us to discern the spirits that we're operating in or with. What do you mean? Are you operating on your spirit? 
Is your spirit man stronger than the Holy Spirit and you're not listening to the Holy Spirit? Ooh, let's put it this way. Is your will and your mind and your things that you have, you want, lifestyles, goals, everything, is that stronger than God's plan for you? This is where we submit. Well, Moses was very meek. No, he was, he was meek not because he was weak. He was meek because he submitted to God's plan and God rewarded him. He started out as the head of Egypt, lowered himself, and God promoted him over here. Let's go to the last scripture. The demons, and you can do this. We've had this. I mean, Daniel saw, Daniel, we had it one night out there where we were praying and somebody was manifesting and we had him say Yeshua. And you know what? They can't say Jesus came in the flesh. Ooh, jeez. Oh, man. They start sparking. 1 Colossians 2.18. I'm up here stumbling through my notes. Colossians 2.18. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and worship of angels. Now that word worship of angels, religion of angels. Catholicism is actually based on angels and visions. Taking his stand on visions he has seen inflated without the cause of his fleshly mind. Constantine saw a vision. Is that true? I heard it was an ankh. What is an ankh? That's the Egyptian death cross. It looks like a cross with a little head on top. Constantine changed the whole church. Martin Luther did not reform us all the way back to the beginning of what we were, where we were in the beginning of the church. Martin Luther basically said, eh, Catholicism is a nice stuff, we'll keep it. Martin Luther was anti-Semitic. Calvin killed Jews. They were being killed because of the Shabbat. There are people who are going to be killed in the end times, because of the Word of God. There are people who are going to be killed, are being killed right now, being tortured because they are Christians. They may not know as much as you do, but their last breath is Christ. Their salvation is based on Christ. Their understanding of everything they have is only Christ. So whatever nonsense, can I say that really mean? Nonsense. The people have put in your brain concerning whatever you think is important, you need to throw it out. And we speak over this place right now because we're taking dominion authority over the demonic spirits, religious spirits, lying spirits, cheating spirits, all those country western song spirits. <laughs> Generational spirits, cultural spirits, Antichrist spirit, anti Bible spirit, those spirits are leaving right now. The end time clarity of your salvation is what's going to promote you, is what's going to save you, what's going to keep you on track. The angels, this is a benefit, that's a sideline benefit. We need to understand yes, we have gifts, and you guys are being trained. Why are you being trained? First of all, maybe God sent you here. You get haughty and you get nutso on me, we will take that out of you. Amen. That's a haughty, nutso spirit. I've seen it. I went to Ramah. Perfectly good people getting pushed into a religious place where they haven't repented or sinned or got themselves cleaned up. And they go nuts. They, get to, they put on a religious spirit. They start walking weird. They talk weird. Hi, right, brother, how art thou? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Y'all. 
We have to get out of that thinking. We have to get out of our cultures and step into our salvation. If you're not getting trained up right now, and we're preaching on this stuff, it's good stuff. God's released, he opened up the window about five minutes ago. Did anybody catch that in the spirit? We shifted. We shifted. And there's a corporate anointing that's coming into this place because this is for end time ministry. And all you are here for training, healing, getting on track, being prepared for the battle. Number one thing is your salvation. If you're not saved, well, you think you got something going on? Ooh, I'm better. I, I don't need that. I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the last minute. <laughs> oh, there goes the trumpet. Oh, you missed it. Jeez. It may happen. Amen. We've seen that. I, am, I, I got some folks here I'm pointing at. I know who he is. There's people we love, and they come to church with us, and they don't care about Christ. They don't care about the side effects, what they're doing, and the sin that they're in, and how it's hurting other people. We have to establish ourselves long term until the end. Father, we thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for the strengthening of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the protection you give inside and outside. The Lord is saying that the angels are for the outside, the Holy Spirit is for the inside. Thank you. We thank you that we are end time warriors. That you are training us to take us up to the next level. We ask, Father, for the protection over Israel. You do send your ministering spirits, your angels there. Protect them. Father, we ask for that revival to come out of Israel, to touch everybody's hearts, to defend your word. Amen. Defend your word in every area of our lives. In Yeshua's name, amen. Praise God.